Welcome to Divorce Happy Hour, your source for everything about divorce in New Jersey and beyond. I'm your host today, John Knocklinger. I am the co-owner of New Jersey Divorce Solutions, a divorce and family law firm located in central New Jersey. Today, we have a very special episode of Divorce Happy Hour. We are going to talk to some of the premier divorce attorneys from around the country about how COVID-19 and the economy are impacting their clients, their employees, and their businesses. It is a treat for all of you to hear from some of the real titans of the legal community. Uh, now I want to introduce our all-star panel uh, in ABC order because I don't know if everyone sees everyone on the screen the same way I do. So I'm just going to do ABC order. First, we have Jenny Bradley. Uh, Jenny is the owner of Triangle Smart Divorce in Cary, North Carolina. She is a self-proclaimed jock and nerd, and she loves 80s trivia. And she's been practicing divorce. She's been a practicing divorce attorney for more than 20 years. Is that right, Jenny? That's right. 98. Right. She's a North Carolina bar certified family law specialist. You can reach her at 919-335-9924. You can also follow her firm on Twitter at Try Smart Divorce. Thanks for being here, Jenny. Thanks, John. Next up, we have Krista Branch. She's the owner of Branch Family Law in San Antonio, Texas, which is one of my favorite places in the world. Krista is a mother to three lovely kids, so she's probably stressed out right now, and she loves all things Disney, which was very evident by just looking at her Facebook page. Um, she's been a practicing divorce attorney for more than 20 years, and she can be reached at 210-229-2088. You can also follow her on Twitter at Krista underscore branch. Next up, we have Megan Freed. She is the co-owner of Freed Markoff. Is it Markcroft? Is that how you say it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. In Mark. Hartford, Connecticut. Megan has been involved in various arts councils in Connecticut, which I was so interested to read about her because I love the arts myself. So that's just awesome. And I, she was also in Glamour Magazine for apparently some kick-ass college commencement speech. So I don't <laughs> think anyone else on the call has been in Glamour. And let, if you have, let us know right now. Um, She's been practicing law for more than 15 years, and a large part of that time has been devoted to divorce and family law. She can be reached at 860-560-8160, and you can follow her firm on Twitter at Freed Markcroft. Uh, next up, we have Katie Lewis. Katie is the owner of Katie L. Lewis Family Law in Dallas, Texas, the big D. Uh, Katie is an avid shoe collector a dog lover, and an inspiring interior decorator. If you go look at her Facebook page of her office, you will see what I'm talking about. Uh, she's been practicing divorce and family law for about 15 years, and she's, a board she's board certified in family law by the Texas Board of Legal Specialization. She can be reached at 214-461-5028. Uh, you can also follow her from on Twitter at Katie Lewis Law. Next up, we have Christina Previtt. She's the co-owner of New Jersey Divorce Solutions in Edison, New Jersey. She's also my partner, if you haven't, couldn't figure that one out. Uh, Christina is a food connoisseur, a beauty buff, and will someday have her own talk show. She yeah. has been practicing divorce and family law for more than 15 years. You can reach her at 732-384-1550. You can also follow her firm on Twitter at, at NJFamLaw. Uh, Finally, we have Alice. Uh, finally, but not least, of course, is Allison Tilton. She's the owner of the Gray Legal Group in Marietta, California. Gray, this is the most fascinating thing in the world. Because I look, I was just reading about your website, Allison. I love how you guys named it Gray because law is not black and white. I think that's awesome. Um, she is the mother of two great kids who apparently she enjoys beating up Monopoly. Not sure that's <laughs> Um, and she has been practicing uh, for more than 10 years. The last seven years, it looks like she's been devoting it largely to divorce and family law. She can be reached at 951-467-4359. You can also follow her firm on Twitter at Gray Legal Group. So uh, we're going to post the contact information for all of our guests um, below so that you can get their phone numbers, their addresses, all the good stuff about them so that... Um, after you hear how brilliant they are today, you're gonna to wanna to call them and get their advice. So let's get to it, guys. So I'm gonna start with you, Allison, since you're the one furthest away from me right now, <laughs> on the other side of the country. Um, 
I was hearing a little bit about this before we started, uh, before we went live. So what's going on right now in California with access to the um, court system and how are you guys handling it? So um, let me just start by saying that my knowledge of the court system in California is based on Southern California, specifically Riverside County, which is a very large county within, within Southern California. We, we, we practice in a couple of counties, but, um, but I'm not sure that all counties are doing the exact same thing. What's happening in our county is that uh, eight out of our 14 courthouses are completely shut down. And for purposes of family law, it's extraordinarily limited. And the only um, hearings that are even being reviewed by a judge, or let alone any orders that are being made, are on requests for temporary restraining orders and um, ex party emergency orders. And this is a very, very narrow aspect of emergency orders. Um, and the judges in our county um, are really not hearing any COVID-19 emergency issues. Um, it has to be like a child abduction uh, kind of issue. Um, which, really which is making stuff, it really, really, really bad stuff. So like we already have lots of bad stuff. So we're gonna narrow it down to like the smallest amount of bad stuff. And that's what we can get orders on. Um, and, and other than that, uh, you know, they're letting us file, which is, which is nice and great. Um, and, and we were recently told that judges are reviewing and signing, um, orders that have been submitted like judgments and stipulations, but they have no clerks to process them. So there's just, they're just sitting in a, in a giant stack somewhere. Um, How do your clients feel about that where you're able to file things, but they're not getting heard? Yeah, it's a, uh, you know, we, we are, um, we're making an effort to be, keep our clients extraordinarily as informed or as informed as possible about what's happening in their cases. Um, we're, we're letting them know when continuances are being granted um, because they're getting automatically continued. Um, and, and we are moving cases forward to the best of our ability. Um, they know that eventually it is going to get set for a hearing um, or at the very least, once we can, we can um, get a filing prepared, that's usually enough to get the other side of a case to, to address. So a lot of it's through informal resolution at this point. Yeah, you know, that's. I think that's what a lot of people are going through. Uh, Krista, what's going on in uh, San Antonio? Are you guys able to get into court? How are your How are your clients dealing with this? Well, um, I'm in Bear County, and we are um, in our county. What we're doing is right now we are doing hearings by Zoom. So this is the first week that we were able to have regular hearings heard that were not emergency, but that were already set on the docket before March 10th. So if you had a hearing set in April, the week of April 23rd, it would more than likely get heard. We um, are doing everything by Zoom and we are doing things, um, it's being gone to YouTube. So what was really interesting is today, I was actually able to be at my house and I was working, I was watching a hearing with one of my associate attorneys on YouTube. So my kids would come in and they would see the YouTube on my TV in our bedroom and it would say Zoom at the bottom. They would go, can they see me? Can they hear me? <laughs> oh, they you know were, about you put it on the big TV, huh? Yes, I put it on the big TV. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I actually watched a um, Texas Supreme Court argument this morning um, on, on, on YouTube. So that was very interesting. And I like the ability of being able to do that. Now, our clients they, right now, um, they're still capping our dockets. So not everyone can get in. They're still hearing a lot of essential matters. So if you were to file something today for a hearing, more than likely, because things are being capped, we would not be able to get in until the end of May or beginning of June unless it was an absolute emergency. And then you would have to get the court's permission. But our clients are being pretty um, good about, you know, understanding. And if it's an emergency, we will get them in. Okay. Well, let's, let's go one more place and see what courts are doing. Uh, let's go to Connecticut. Uh, Megan, what's going on in Hartford? Are you guys able to uh, get in in front of judges or how are your clients? Yeah, we're a lot more like Allison than we are like Krista. Um, we're really down to ex parte emergency motions. And, and frankly, I think some things that would have gotten in on emergency motions 
uh, under normal times aren't getting in under emergency mm. notion. Um, we have had a couple of things. I don't know if you guys know this, but um, Connecticut's little tagline is the land of steady habits. <laughs> so here in the land of steady habits, we are not switching to video. <laughs> here in the land of steady <laughs> habits, judges don't have laptops, right? Um, so we're sort of interacting with our conservative nature here. Um, um, it's funny, like red state, blue state, sure, a blue state, but very hesitant to change. Um, one of the things that we did liberalize is we're allowed to remotely notarize. We can we can also file, Allison, so that's not been a problem, but, but there are certain documents that require a, a client's notarized signature to initiate, um, initiate the matter, and we didn't have a way to notarize unless we were, um, you know, in the same room, which none of us are, are, are doing right now. So, um, so remote notarization was, a, was actually like, that was great for us. The other thing is an executive order came out um, saying that we can get, we can finalize fully agreed upon divorces. So essentially an uncontested can go to final judgment, which is great on the papers instead of normally in Connecticut, um, we take oral testimony on, um, on uncontested in, except for in very rare circumstances, the mechanics of how judges are going to do that aren't worked out. But I think that that's a great sign because some folks we've, we've got a deal, but we're just sort of hanging out there. So maybe they'll work it out by the time this is over. Um, <laughs> you know, I did, I think I read somewhere on your site that um, Harper's got one of the oldest bar associations in the country. Is that right? Yeah, we do so the maybe, Harper's County Bar Association. Yeah. Maybe they're still stuck in the 1700s. Yeah. Well, and the other thing is, of course, unlike, you know, again, with, with Texas and California and New Jersey, um, we're so small that I think we're the size of some of your counties in our whole state. <laughs> right? But we still have some parochialism where court A is doing it this way, court B is doing it that way. So they are really making an effort to, um, to get some uniformity on how these things are being handled across the street so a client doesn't get a different result in Hartford than they would in Stanford. So Okay. So Jenny, um, moving sort of beyond the courts themselves, what kind of challenges are your clients facing right now? I mean, aside from their fear of getting COVID-19, like what other challenges are they facing? Well, like most of the ladies on this call and maybe you too, John, they're all having to become school teachers and getting really thankful for the job the school teachers have been doing. Um, on top of that, a lot of them are having to work from home. So they're balancing trying to work with remote learning with their kids. Um, some people have lost jobs, so the income is not what the income used to be. And as we all know, when people are living in two households, it's not as cheap as living in one. And now when there's one paycheck, it's even worse than it was before. Um, so people are getting really scared beyond the health crisis. I almost think they're more scared about the economic crisis in our state than they are about catching COVID. Mm. Yeah, I think that's the case uh, a lot of places. Have you been um, have you been encountering many issues with parents arguing about how this homeschooling is supposed to work? People that aren't living together anymore. No, not really. Um, for the most part, people that are going to do the remote learning are going to do it anyway, and the people that aren't aren't. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of like homework before we have remote learning. <laughs> the parents that are going to help with homework help with homework and projects and the parents that aren't aren't and so i don't really i don't really see any change there across our clientele it's the same gripes just a different format all right it seems like you always have one client you know that says like the kids come back and they never have their homework done there's always one there's always yeah. one. It, there's it's always usually because one. they used into it the right way the way that you wanted the other yeah. parent to do it nine times out of ten the homework is done it's just not done by the parent and that was the problem the other parent has but yeah yeah so katie what what are your clients dealing with right now in dallas well i will say i had a couple get back together because of covid Woo. we have two that wow. was kind of exciting yeah what? I like to hear the logic behind that. <laughs> Seriously. 
Um, I think that because they share a small child and because they were um, together in one place, it forced them to work some things out. Wow. Yeah, they'll that. be back. Oh, stop. <laughs> but, but, so, statistically, they'll be back. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, so, okay, so you've, you've got, you know, you had the magical touch along with COVID-19 and getting some people back together, Katie. So what else have you been encountering? What other interesting challenges have your clients been having? Um, same challenges that Jenny mentioned with regards to um, worrying about what the other side's doing with the kids. They're having play dates. They're exposing the children to COVID. They're not following the guidelines. Here in Dallas County, we are one of the more restrictive counties in the state of Texas, and they just issued yesterday a stay-at-home order extended to May 15th, where the county to the north of us has not extended to May 15th. And so you've got some different ideas on how to handle this situation, and parents are latching on to different information based upon where they live, or basically what information appeases them in their side. So... You know, it's, it's a challenge for everybody. So, Christina, what, what challenges have you been uh, seeing clients here in our office having? Well, you know, I'm not as attuned to what the clients are experiencing because I'm running the firm. But um, what I hear is just an overall sense of, I don't want to say panic, because not everybody's panicked, but concern about, is everything on hold? Is this, is, is everything still proceeding? Is this going to take longer now? Um, when's this going to be over? Which, you know, none of us can answer. So I think it's just the uncertainty, right? Of not knowing what's going to happen. And I think it's difficult for us as attorneys and advisors to really make them feel a little better because we don't know when this is going to be over. And, you know, I think somebody had mentioned already that some of the counties are doing things their own way. So there's not any real uniformity anymore. Because in New Jersey, there's uniformity. It's not like Pennsylvania where every commonwealth has something different going on. But um, it's hard, I think, for us not to be able to really give them certain advice because we don't know. But so, I think being available for, to them to yeah. advise them and assuage some of their fears is helpful. Yeah, I think so too. So uh, sticking with you, Christina, um, moving beyond your clients to your employees, because everyone on this call is um, a business owner. We're all, uh, we own, all own businesses, we all have employees. So what, what issues have you been encountering with your employees as we've been navigating this whole stay at home uh, environment that we're all in? I think trying to guide them into adjusting to working from home. It's been really challenging for people and I can relate because I experienced it too. I have found certain things to work for me, which naturally I want to share with everybody else. And we've been very vocal about this on Facebook and, and talking to other professionals, but it's so important to try to have some kind of routine at home. And I've experienced that when, when this all first started, I would just get up, I'd be in my bunny slippers and you know, that was pretty much it. That was my day. And I didn't feel like I had actually had any control over my day. And I, that became very stressful. And I'm trying to emphasize to our staff that everything's not going to be identical to the way it was at home uh, or at work, but try to have some type of schedule, like whatever it is at home, have a schedule, have a workstation to the extent that you can. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Jenny, what have you been doing with your employees and how's that been impacting them? Um, we are not in the most strictest of stay-at-home orders in North Carolina. The governor deemed law firms to be essential services, uh, but we are closed to the public, and some of my staff has chosen to work from home. So one of our issues has been integrating the remote team with the team that's choosing to come into the office and not having the remote team feel isolated. Um, so we've been doing morning zoom huddles like normally we would do a meeting in the hallway and talk about 
where we were stuck in cases and what our challenges were today that we might need help with, uh, what successes we had yesterday. We switched that to Zoom and put them up on the TV so everybody can see them and they can see us. Um, and I think one of the other challenges has been the people that are working from home or also working at home where their spouses and children are and, and they have, are trying to find themselves a safe place sanctuary in the house to continue to have confidential calls with clients and not have interruptions and, and those types of things. And so we've, you know, provided them with the technology we could provide them with so they can do basically their entire job at home, but we can't build them a new office at home right now. So that's been one challenge some of my team has expressed that it's hard doing what we do for a living and not exposing people's confidential information to their family. So time. what part of your office is working in the office versus virtual? Uh, interestingly, our receptionist is virtual. She took her entire phone from the front desk home with her uh, so she could transfer at one button instead of just using her cell phone. Um, one lawyer and one paralegal. So four, three out of eight of us are working from home. And then one paralegal is doing split time. She has, she has a 2 2 five schedule with her child and so the day she has her child she works from home the day she doesn't she comes in now what was this dictated by you or did you give them an option no i didn't dictate anything i said guys you know you've got to decide for yourselves what you're comfortable with you know and i say guys that must be a jersey thing we're all girls here but <laughs> uh folks that's a southern thing folks y'all got to decide what it is that you're comfortable with here like i'm not mandating you be in the office i'm not mandating you work from home we will set you up for success in either place tell me where you are most comfortable and that's what we'll do that's awesome um, so the ones that are you know the ones that are working from home it's not any different our conferences with clients are on phone or on zoom anyway so because we're not like i said having outside folks come in so our biggest thing was we wanted each member of our staff to feel like they were taking the right action for themselves and their family. Um, yeah, I think it goes back to what Christina was saying. I mean, as long as you're able to keep a schedule at your house, you know, working from home is a, is a good deal for just about anybody. I think it's just hard for somebody who's never worked from home to get used to the idea of, you know, getting up and, you know, still taking a shower and still, you know, getting in front of their computer at the same time every day so they can be productive. I mean, I think that's probably a big issue a lot of business owners are having right now with their work at home employees. Um, Krista, are your, most of your employees working from home? Yes, yeah, so we, we originally were giving them the option and then um, when San Antonio went into a stay in a, a shelter in place a few weeks ago, I said, everyone's gotta go, go work from home. And I was trying to work from home. I had two people that were working here, three actually. And I, I'm about 10 minutes away from my office. So I would love to come into my office every day. I love my children. But <laughs> I get so much more done when I'm in the office. But, um, but you can now, be honest. <laughs> I love them, but, you know, I get more done here. <laughs> so um, right now we only have one person that's working here full time. She was having um, internet issues. So... I basically let everyone take home their computers if they needed to and they weren't able to get set up. And, and I know some more people would like to get back in the office, but we are still um, trying to make sure everything's okay, even though our governor is trying to push us to be open by May 1st. Um, I think our mayor is going to try to slow it down a little bit. So, um, but it, it's working for us, but it's different. I've never worked from home. Um, like I said, I have three children. And so um, the kids are having a hard time understanding that when I'm there, that I'm working. That, you know, my daughter um, is nine and she was telling me the other day, she was like, but you're always on a call. You know, why, you know, why can't you just, you know, I don't know, sit with me and do my social studies <laughs> or something, you know? So everything's falling on my husband right now and he's doing all the schoolwork with the kids, but it's different. But We've realized that if um, we had to, some of our people could actually work from home. Our office manager, she has children. She's a single mom. So if we end up coming back in the office before the end of the, of the um, school year in, in MA, I've already told her you can continue to work from home. So that way you can stay with your kids because she can get her stuff done there. You know, it's harder for us for our receptionist to work from home, but she's doing it. <laughs> 
Well, that's sort of going to be the, the really interesting part about what happens next, right? Where if they start reopening non, uh, non-essential businesses and everyone's starting to go back to the office, but the schools are still closed, like what's going to happen? I mean, if schools are closed, you know, we, someone's got to be home with the kids. So it's gonna, this is going to be a big problem. I, think, I don't think that the leaders everywhere have thought through this about logistically how this is actually going to work. You kind of, I thought you'd kind of have to do them in concert. If the schools are closed, you sort of need to keep non-essential businesses closed too to some degree so that you can have some kind of equilibrium. But so Krista, your, your employees that are working from home, have you been noticing that they're still performing their jobs well? Have you noticed any drop-off in their performance? What have you been noticing? Well, we've had a little bit of drop-off in our production, but I expected that. I, I knew that when that was going to happen, that we were going to have a drop in our production just because it was something different. And because some people are dealing with schooling their kids from home, um, other people have other people at home that they're not used to and different things like that. You know, we have one of our, one of our paralegals, um, it's her husband, her daughter, um, her son-in-law and her grandkids. So, so she had a lot of people at home and so it's, you know, it's, it's different. So, but I've noticed that the last, um, mm two weeks our production was down a little bit but this week it's, it's going back up so I think everyone just has to kind of find their groove you know and I think that that's one of the issues though like you were saying with the schools not opening and if businesses reopen we're going to start seeing some issues with our clients of of who's going to take who of well I don't have primary custody but I I'm still able to stay with the kids and that's one of the issues that we're seeing a lot right oh, now yeah, yeah th- I mean that's it's going to be a problem everywhere um, so Allison, you, um, what's going on in your office? Are you guys all working from home right now? Yeah. So technically a law firm is an essential office. We could be open. Um, but, um, but we're not, uh, well, we're open, but virtually open. Um, we, we have, um, so I should just correct your, your intro. So I'm a co-owner, um, of, of my firm. So, in our office, there's there's nine of us, and six out of the nine have have kids enrolled in school. Um, so they closed our schools pretty early on, um, and as soon as they closed our schools, we recognized the fact that our our staff, including ourselves, we we're going to have a big problem coming to the office. Um, so we just kind of flipped a switch. We made it all virtual. We bought some laptops. Um, and we came up with a, with a way to, to make it all work. Luckily we were already cloud-based, um, and paperless. So I think paperless was kind of the key to, to making this, this work. Um, but all, all of our staff is working from home. We've given them the option that if they'd like to come into the office, they, they technically could. Um, but so we're using kind of the office as our sanctuary or our getaway. (laughs) Um, so, uh, like I'm at my office right now. Um, because I too have, have young children at home. Um, and I wasn't really sure that they would, they would stay away from mom during, during this. (laughs) Um, so, uh, so, so yeah, so we are, uh, we're operational, um, and doing everything just, just virtually. Um, and we also will have a, a similar issue, uh, if they, if they open up ports and open up businesses, um, our, our schools, um, technically closed, well, I won't say the word close. They, they've, they've, they've ended this school year in the school, in, in going to the, the physical location um, a couple weeks ago. So we already know that our schools are closed through June. Um, and notwithstanding that, we don't know if there's going to be summer camp options or the usual Boys and Girls Club options or any of those options available um, that a lot of us utilize um, for, our, for our children. So um, that's going to also be a, a big challenge with the ability to come back to a physical office location. Um, so, so yeah, that's, that's going to be interesting. And productivity wise, um, we, we've just emphasized, I think very, very similarly to what's already kind of been expressed, uh, flexibility. Um, you know, one of our staff members has three children under the age of six. Um, that's, that's a challenge in and of itself. Um, and during the day, she can't necessarily focus on certain, certain things. So we have just said, we're going to be as flexible as possible. Um, and, you know, not hold you to that strict, 
8.30 to 5 p.m. You have to do all your work during these hours because maybe it makes way more sense to start working at 6 a.m. Um, and get a ton of stuff accomplished maybe in that hour before kids wake up or something or before they're, they're needy. Um, that, that's kind of the way I look at it. Like my kids wake up super early, but they are fairly self-sufficient until about 9 a.m. Um, <laughs> and then, and then, <laughs> right, 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 exactly. So, um, you know, we just said, do what you need to do um, because we need to still get the work done and we still need to be able to service the clients um, and, and address all their concerns. So we're, we're making it work. Um, and, and I, and I think it's going to continue on. I mean, I don't think that there's going to be any way that we're going to say, Oh, everyone goes back to work. Everyone come back to work. It's just not. And I, and I, I think as business owners, we have to recognize that we, we're going to need to be extraordinarily flexible and, um, you know, make some accommodations um, and use this as an opportunity to to look how we can expand in the future without necessarily bringing people into a physical office space. It's um, funny. I know it's, it's yeah. funny that that I think is going to be a huge problem for the commercial real estate market as we go forward. People have finally realized we don't need these big offices that we pay way too much for. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, it's just it's insane. But I mean, I that's that's something that um, I think we're all going to sort of come to terms with is what can we do without going to the office every day? Um, do you feel, Allison, that your um, are, are your employees at all showing any signs of stress um, in terms of the way they're interacting with clients or the way they're interacting with each other with being home all the time? So actually, no, um, I, I thought, I, I thought that was going to be a big, big issue. Um, I think that was one of the things I was the most concerned about, um, with this whole change. Um, but I, I talk to them on a, on a regular basis. Um, I think I, I wear more of the, the Christina hat where I'm like the, the, the firm administrator in our office. Um, and I have a lot of employee interaction and, and follow up with them. Um, and I've, I don't see that that that's been a problem uh, at, at all. Um, but again, like I, I think we we've been as supportive as we as I can think of to them to to kind of put it at the forefront and make it acceptable, um, so that if they were feeling any of these these things or any of these stresses, that we would come up with a way or a method for them to overcome them. Um, so I don't know if it's just that we got in front of it um, that we haven't laid off anyone in our office um and that we've we've um we just hired two people um wow. and we've uh yeah we're rocking and rolling out here in california <laughs> um so I, I think that positive messaging to them that we we're a team and we're gonna make we're gonna get through this and we're gonna recognize that we've got changes um but we're committed uh, I, th- I think has and they've you know, I don't, I don't need thank yous. Um, but I've, but I've gotten a lot of them and it's, that's just telling me that they recognize that, um, a lot of the offices around us shut down. They furloughed their whole staffs. Um, they put their head in the sand and said, we're not going to deal with this. We'll deal with this sometime later. And I think that that's, that's been somewhat positive for our team to recognize that they're not in the same boat as all those other places. Well, you guys sound like incredible leaders and that's what's so important in this whole uh, situation. So Megan, I know you've got a very large office. What are you guys doing? Are you letting everyone work from home or what's happening? Yeah, so um, similar to some of the other folks, um, we're technically essential um, as a law firm in Connecticut, but um, Kristen, my partner, and I made the decision on March 16th that we were going to um, close the physical offices. So we have we have two offices um, that we work out of normal <laughs> normally, right? Um, and so we already had a staff, um, like Allison, I think, said, we're, I mean, as paperless as paperless can be, that we don't have giant red wells in our office unless we're going to court. So um, we're paperless, we're cloud-based, everyone has a laptop, we don't have any desk, desktops anymore. So we just switched into that modal, a mode, um, tried to move what would have been in-person meetings to Zoom rather than to the phone because this is better than the, this. Um, 
So we tried to do that. Um, for some of our staff, one of the things that they experienced was like actual physical issues, right? Back problems from using laptops all day. So we shipped monitors to people's houses who wanted them. Um, we shipped some AirPods to people's houses who really wanted, you know, a better connectivity like for what they are hearing. So that's what we did. So we've been all remote since March um, 16th. Some some of you guys, um, because we're, we're all friends, know this, but we actually live in the same building as our um, main headquarters in Hartford, Connecticut are located. And so Kristen and I actually go into the office to do things like check the mail and scan. <laughs> and um, we're still... Checks come from um, checks come into us, and we sign the checks in our office and mail them out from our office. So it's interesting. It's sort of like we founded our firm in 2012, and we're doing some of the things we used to do in 2012. It's the two of us again. What is uh, with paper checks? Is what I, I want to know, guys. What, what is going on with paper checks? Like why um, you don't use them? Well, we, I mean, we, everyone can accept e-checks. I'm pretty sure now uh, most of us have some kind of processor that can do e-checks. I'm yeah. just wondering about the paper checks. Have you ever thought about getting rid of them? Yeah. Think about like, we, these are like paying our marshals or re refunds of retainers. Like it's mostly, we don't use checks to pay, you know, for our software or it's very, it's the stuff we haven't been able to transition to electronic, which is mostly like client refunds and marshals. Paper checks are like rotary phones. Yeah. <laughs> Paper checks are like rotary phones. And, and, or like the fa like a fax, like in Connecticut. Um, yeah, I know, right? Like faxes are sort of becoming obsolete too. Oh but. my gosh, we used to fax file, which was an innovation over like mail filing, right? Before we got e-filing. And when we fax file, every time I send a fax, I'm like, that's just Hoping what? That there's paper in a machine somewhere? Our clients definitely want checks for refunds and um, so do our what about What about your payments in from clients? Do you still get a lot of checks from clients? We mostly, mostly e-checks and credit cards. I would say m most people that are comfortable most people are comfortable with the e-check. I don't know if you guys use LaPay, but most people are comfortable with the e-check via LaPay or a credit card. We do get them though. Um, sometimes like for example, if a parent of a client is helping them with the fee and things like that, that'll come in a check, but it's much more, it's much more electronic for us. Yeah, I, I agree. I, usually the parents handwrite checks still. I, I imagine yeah. them, I, it's the type of people I imagine being at the grocery store still writing a check. Yeah, like check people. Out. Yeah. yeah. Well, so Katie, um, your office is um, working from home. How are, how are they dealing with it? And more importantly, how are you dealing with it? Are you, st are you staying sane? I am staying sane. I think uh, creating a routine. I uh, was like Christina in the beginning, except my slippers had sequins and bows on them. <laughs> <laughs> and was doing that routine and then realized this isn't working so well for me. I, I thrive in structure. So getting up, getting dressed, getting ready. Um, my office is completely remote. Everyone is working from home. We did have our first Zoom hearing last week. And so... My associate and I, one of the paralegals, were here in this conference room, spread out, conducting this hearing. And um, in fact, some, some of my staff asked if I needed any help with this webinar today so they could come into the office and, and have a break. But, you know, we are essential employees and, or essential workers, I should say. And, um, but we're completely set up remotely with laptops and voice over IP and, and everyone seems to be doing actually pretty well. So I'm very, very proud of my team. Have you noticed productivity taking any kind of hit since you guys started working from home? A, a, a little bit in the beginning, I would say, because you're having to figure out new ways of doing things and getting things done, e-signatures, um, document production's a little bit different, but everyone's really gotten the hang of it and, and, and are functioning at a pretty good rate that I'm very proud of. So. Uh, Jenny, have you guys had any technology problems or is everything pretty steady? Um, I don't, don't, 
I can't think of any technology problems because like Megan, we had VoIP phones, everybody had a laptop, everything's in the cloud. Um, everybody had a scan snap at their desk. So like one of the paralegals took her scan snap home with her and said, I'm going to take this big document production that we have and scan it all in at home. Um, I, I'm not thinking any. The only thing I can think of. At the beginning, we had people with internet issues. Yeah. That seemed to have worked. I don't know if yeah. you guys had that where their home internet was slow, everybody was on it at once, but that seems to have taken care of itself. Yeah, we didn't really. Paralegals. I'm sorry, Jenny. No, I so we, didn't, we didn't really have that because we're nestled in Cary, North Carolina, in this area called the RTP, the Research Triangle Park. So pretty much everybody's cooking with gas with fiber around here. <laughs> so. We didn't have that. We have Google Fiber, we have Giga on AT&T, and we have, I don't even remember what the other fiber, Spectrum has a fiber now. So we have lots of fiber. So that wasn't the problem. The problem was, I remember what it was, our receptionist does not have a laptop. She's the only person that had a desktop. So we sent her home, and after two days, she's like, guys, you keep telling me to open these electronic files for the new clients, but I don't have access to the server in the cloud on my desktop. And I was like, oh, crap. <laughs> but that was it. That was our snafu. Now, Krista, go. Sorry. Help, oh, help. Oh. I was just saying we were having internet problems and so that is why one of our paralegals is actually working from the office right now because um, it just it, it cannot she, she cannot make it work and um, we let like I said we, earlier we let them take their desktops home with them I offered to buy them laptops if they needed to everyone wanted to take their desktop because it was already done you know so um, we have you know scan snaps out of the office right now too so but everyone you know is, is doing well on that so it's just, you know, we had, we had the hearing today. My attorney had her hearing today, and during um, the hearing, you know, I heard her tell the judge um, I have a, that she had a message, Internet unstable. And then the judge <laughs> got that on his, you know, so those are the issues when you're having the Zoom hearings. It's a little glitchy, but, you know, the judges are, are being very um, patient. Everyone's doing the best they can with the situation. It's yes. funny, Christy and I always uh, joke around about like the older attorneys are, uh, you know, I, I lovingly call them the dinosaurs who, um, I, I don't know how they're functioning right now. Um, the ones that did not have a paperless office, the ones who, you know, still used carbon copies. We, I still know some of those people. I, no I, don't, I don't know how they're functioning right now. I mean, we're, everyone, <laughs> everyone on this call is, um, you know, savvy. We're all we're all pretty savvy business owners and are keep up with the times. But there's so many business owners out there that were not prepared for this at all. And I don't know how they're functioning. I think it's that we're so savvy. I, I think it's I, I that think we're that. not. I'm sorry, we're not old. <laughs> like, I don't, even I don't mean that to be insulting, but when you know a certain generation has become accustomed to doing things a certain way. They're very resistant to using new technology. So they, and I get it, you know, like Sydney knows how to use my iPhone better than I do. I, I use it for what I, what I need it for and I don't really care beyond that. But I, there does come a point at which that you have to get with the times. You know, you have to learn how to use the fax machine or whatever, you know. And this, and as many of you have been saying, this might change the way we do business forever. Um, and probably for some of us, I think that is a welcome change too. I mean, I'm very happy. Um, I think, Megan, you were talking about how Connecticut has this fax filing. We didn't even have that. New Jersey had nothing other than you have to take papers to a courthouse up until last week when they finally got some kind of electronic wow. filing. Oh, wow. They got it? Like they pulled that off in the middle of this? That's fantastic. Yes. Well, I think they've been working on it for like, you know, 17 years and they finally said, okay, well, maybe we should give it a shot right now. And it's basically just a, it's basically a cloud upload. It's really nothing fancy. Um, but they don't have electronic filing there in Jersey? Nope. Nope. We don't oh, have no. it. Not in family court. We, Not just, in family we court. just got it. Everyone else has it. Appellate has it. Uh, criminal has it. Civil has it. We just, we're the uh, ugly stepchild children. Mm -hmm. we, don't we don't have it either in North Carolina. So crazy. you're in great company. Well, you guys have the you guys have the awesome internet. We don't even have that here. Right. It's the rotary phone. They're still using the rotary phone. <laughs> no, we still use fax though. We can't serve by email. We have to serve by fax or in person or by mail. We have to we can't serve by fax. So yeah, we're definitely like
traditional that way. But I, I mean, now I'm grateful for our e-filing. Oh yeah, you should be, you should be. So I want to go around the horn to everyone real quick as the last sort of thing. And I want to hear what everyone's uh, taking this opportunity. I've heard several of you say you've been taking this as an opportunity to make plans for the future. I wonder if you would share some of some of your ideas about what you think your firm, you have in store for your firm as you move forward after this crisis is over into the future. Let's start with Allison. Well, um, so, gosh, that's such a huge question. I know. Um, well, just, but, just give us but, some, but some, here's, nuggets. Here's, some nuggets. Here's, here's what I think is kind of the best thing that's the result of this that we would have never probably done before. And it has nothing to do with us being savvy. I think it has to do with being resourceful. Um, so we, we, we basically took on a huge project with the help of a wonderful millennial in our office because I didn't understand any of this, is moving our entire procedure manual into an, um, into an online training platform with built out like kind of quizzes, which moved us from having a person-based training platform to an online training platform, um, be, which, which will be massively huge going forward because um, it, it, it gives us the ability to hire people virtually, uh, to hire you know, someone anywhere, but also to be able to onboard multiple people at the same time because it's not relying on a person. Um, I mean, it's not that it doesn't rely on a person at all, but it doesn't, they can do it themselves. Um, so that, that's just like one opportunity that we, we saw and seized upon and used resources for minimal cost. Um, it just takes time and we don't that's usually awesome. have the amount of time, you know? We might want to steal your millennial after you're done using them for this. That sounds like an awesome idea. What we about can you, totally figure something out. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Katie? What, wonder, what wonderful plans do you have after this is all done? Well, I'm trying to use, because our skills as family law attorneys is that we need to be forward thinking for our clients, um, anticipate what's on going to happen down the road when we're structuring our settlement agreements. And so I'm trying to be forward thinking as we come out of this COVID situation what tweaks, what things do I need to anticipate in the future for my clients? On a personal level, I'm thinking about the business and changes that we may need to implement uh, to, be, to be more resourceful and forward moving if anything like this were to ever happen again. And um, hopefully it won't, but just using those forward thinking skills for both my clients and my team. Well, that's wonderful. What about you, Christina? What what wonderful things do you have in store for? Well, you and I have talked about some of it, so hopefully I'm not giving away any secrets. But um, I'm starting to question why we actually need to have such a large physical space. And if we could just move into the future and, and always work remotely. You know, I, I think it solves a lot of problems. It probably produces new problems that we have to find solutions for. But I feel like as a business owner, it, it could eliminate so much overhead cost if people could largely work remotely. And I think that's going to depend on whether people want to do that. So I actually had a question for you guys. I'm curious if you like working remotely or if you are anxious for everything to go back to normal. I mean, what do you guys think about that? So let's go around. Krista, what do you think? My firm is anxious to get back in the office. I'll tell you that my workers, they're doing, they're doing a really good job working from home and I'm realizing certain positions that can work from home. But I think as a whole, as a team, our dynamic, um, they are very anxious to get back in the office. We do a we do a Zoom meeting every morning. We had never done the morning huddles. I'd always try to do them, and we just could never get them to work. And now that we're doing them, that will continue for us doing those, which I think really works well. But um, my team is anxious to come back. For me, it would be hard for me to work from home just because even because we homeschool one of our kids. So there's always someone at the house. And it messes up his schedule when I'm home. Like if I'm coming to the office late, just on a normal day, it messes his schedule up, you know, because I'm there and, you know, and it's playtime or whatever. So, um, but I, I do think that um, 
I think working remotely is great. It's allowed us to know that there's a lot of things we can do differently. Um, we are not completely paperless. We have always had our files, and that's part of because our courts have always required us to give them a file of everything because they 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 have not been able to access. We were laughing. Our courts could not access the pleadings on the um, hearings during the hearings, but they set Zoom up within a week. Our judges, and I want to say most of the judges in Texas, can you probably agree that they have like got on the Zoom thing and they have done a really good job. So I'm really impressed with with that. But then I laugh when they're like, oh, but we can't pull up your, you know, your pleading that you filed yesterday <laughs> on the computer. <laughs> so. so Jenny, uh, would you want to continue uh, doing some working from home? I know your firm's about half and half, or actually not quite half and half, but would you want to continue that? You know, I want to continue not working in the office, period, and be sitting on some beach. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Amen. As to the, the office as a whole, though, the day-to-day -day operations, I think that um, I'm a little torn, honestly. Sometimes it depends on what day you ask me or what hour it is. I miss having the whole team in one place and, like, um, what we get from just our interactions as we pass each other in the hallway or maybe we have an impromptu meeting about a case or something like that. I just kind of miss that. Part of my personality i think that some of our team is thriving and doing better at home than they are in the office uh, so i'm not opposed to it i'm sitting in my office it's 5,000 square feet and going it's great because we can social distance all five of us that are here have a thousand square feet to ourselves but um I'm, I'm like christina i'm like wow what the hell did i get this big space for that i had these great plans to build out over the next three years hmm Okay. <laughs> Megan, so, would, you, would you want to continue working from home or have your people work from home? Yeah. So, so, so Kristen, my partner and I um, work mm -hmm. mostly from home anyway. We're basically in the office more for like appointments or, you know, just on one of those days where it makes sense to be in there. So this is, um, I, normal is such a strange word these days, but this is somewhat normal for us. So like we've developed the patterns and the discipline around working from home ourselves. And we've also always, um, we've all, always had employees who have a primarily work from home schedule, like a, um, a, a lawyers with small children, mo you know, like moms with small, small children who kind of do that. I forget who said it, but they really work um, early and late in their days. And so we've always been open to that flexibility, really whatever works for the person. Um, I will say, I, I think that we both want to maintain that level of flexibility. We don't have a physical office space for every single employee. We have, um, we have some flip spaces that are sort of like visiting spaces or, um, at home workspaces that can flip from one person to another. Again, this works because of laptops and dock stations and stuff like that. So I think more of that is great. I, I will say though that some of our folks who are used to being in the office, who that's their preference, they're like, they, we miss each other, you know? And I feel that too. I'm really miss people. Like we have a, we, we have a Friday happy hour that's most days physically when we're together and we've been doing, in addition to our Zoom huddles and everything, we've been doing a standing Friday happy hour. And I'll tell you, you can pay me to miss it. I just like can't, I can't wait to just talk like about not work with my colleagues. So yeah, I think the mix, we're going to probably keep the mix, but if we needed to test none of us being in the office, it has been successfully tested. Let's go back to normal now, please. <laughs> Spectacular. What do you think, Katie? Given the choice, would you got, would you continue with this work from home? I'm like Jenny. Uh, depends on what day you're asking me. Um, before all this happened, I was going to try to attempt to work from home one day a week. Um, and... Uh, man, I, I'm up at the office right now. I miss it so much, I, but I think it's just given the situation. I think what what this is showing us is different people thrive in different situations. And so we're all learning how we, we cope and, and what our preferences are. Um, I think it'll be a while before I choose to work from home once everything gets back to normal. But, um, you know, there's something to be said about being at home and being comfortable and in your own space. 
What if you had some employees that came to you and said, you know, I really enjoyed working from home. I mean, would you give that some consideration moving forward? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, if they're going to thrive in that environment and they're going to be happy, it's a win-win situation for everyone. Absolutely. What about you, Allison? I, say, I, I feel like Katie took the words out of my mouth, right? Because so I, I, I thrive on, on people. Um, so I, I have never considered for myself not coming back to the office. Um, to me, the idea of working from home was like the most gruesome thing ever. And it's not because I don't love my family. It's because I really thrive on people. Um, but um, I recognize that other people, they don't need that. Um, and, you know, we, our plans were that we were going to need a substantially more office space than we have now by the end of this year. Um, and our lease is up in July of 2021. So we were, we were exploring the options of renting substantially more, more office space. Um, and now I'm like, do we really need that? You know, um, what, what Megan is talking about with these flexible workspaces is exactly what I've been thinking about now um, and the idea of giving people the option because I've recognized they don't need to physically be in the office. If they can, if, if they like working at home and if they are as productive at home as in the office, we, we can create systems to make that work. Um, you know, systems that we already use in the office, we're just utilizing them more now that people are working remotely. So for myself, I need to get back to this space, but, uh, or some space that's not my house. Um, but, uh, you know, if, if it, there's no, to me, there's no reason why every physical person is required to be in the office. And this is like a radically way, different way of thinking because my business partner and I had this very conversation in the beginning of end of February, early March, when we were traveling for business and we had talked about virtual hires and we were both like, hell no, it's not going to happen. Absolutely not. Like not, there was not even a question. It, the, the, the idea was like thrown down so fast that I couldn't even believe it like came out of my mouth. And now our tunes have changed so fast to be like, this, this totally works. Um, so mixed bag over here. <laughs> oh, that's, that's perfectly appropriate. So um, I want to go back over to Krista on what your plans are after this is all over because we didn't get to hear about them. I mean, I guess you talked a little bit about maybe working from home sort of things, but tell us something else that you're planning after this whole crisis is over. Well, I think that um, one of the things is that we're going to try and utilize more of the technology. Our firm, we don't really have any millennials here. Um, everyone is in their, um, I think our youngest is in her late thirties, mid to late thirties. So, um, you know, I remember still doing things by fax still, you know, I didn't have a cell phone in law school, you know, <laughs> back in the, you know, I was in law Don't school. Don't date back, yourself. <laughs> back in the nineties, you know, I didn't have a cell phone. That wasn't something that everyone had. And so, um, but I definitely think like we're definitely using more of our online systems with um, our case management program. And so I think just for us, we're going to probably get a little bit more tech savvy and really um, use that and help our clients more with that too. Our clients, I think, are realizing that they can do a whole lot more um, on, on, the, on the technical side as well. You know, even with, you know, um, we used to have in the orders, they would do FaceTime calls. We can do Zoom calls with your kids when you can't see them. You know, we have visit, we have certain visits with CPS um, cases to where they are doing, um, you know, Zoom, Zoom, Zoom visits now because they can't go over there because of our um, certain rules within the CPS system and stuff. But yeah, I think, I think for me, it's just, I'm really taking this as an opportunity to get a little bit more tech savvy and to, um, to rise our firm up and rise our people up and to tell our people, that's one thing is like, hey guys, we can do this by not having a physical file in front of you. As long as the file is in front of your computer and you have a file there, we can definitely do this. And I think for a lot of people, it was just, it was hard not having that paper. I'm a paper person. You can see yeah. some of my files back here on my desk. Oh, yeah. um, you know, I still have my big buckets, <laughs> Megan, of all of our files in it. Because that's just how we are. And we have everything on the computer. Everything is scanned into the computer. It's not like it's not there. 
But, you know, I think for me, it's more of a tech thing. Like, we're, I definitely know that we can do this. And we also learned that we can work from home if we need to. Well, we just started using DocuSign for the first time during this crisis. And now I don't ever want to have anyone actually sign something and scan ever again, because it's just so much easier. Well, um, all right, so let's... So good. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So let's, um, let's finish up with Jenny. So... Um, I'm interested to hear what, if you've got any glorious plans for when this is all done, because I know you're a thinker and an innovator. So what do you, what do you have up your sleeve? Oh boy. Um, well, we have taken this time to do a lot of what everyone has already said, as far as working on our own office infrastructure and procedures and policy manuals. And Katie, I know you'll love this term. We call it the, if someone gets hit by the bus, how do I do your job plan? Ooh. I do. Katie loves that. But we were told that that was very negative and we should use, so-and-so has a two-week tropical vacation and can't do their job. Um, because <laughs> we have grown from a smaller firm to having more people now that we still have a lot of things in our head that we have not put down to paper or we have not put to our internal wiki or whatever it is that Allison's using for her stuff. Um, so we're doing that. Um, I have been very, very resistant not to have face-to-face in-person meetings with new clients just because I want the personal interaction, the body language and everything else. And I think this period has taught us that we can open ourselves up to having more zoom initial conferences. Um, I'm also a certified mediator and I have conducted mediations now on Zoom that I swore for years I would never do. I was like, no, I'd rather do it over the phone. I'm not going to do it on Zoom. No, actually, it works better on Zoom. I agree with Megan. This is better than this. Um, so just those kinds of things, embracing the things that we've been forced to do now, John, and then not going back to how we did them before is probably the biggest thing we're doing. And... Um, trying to get our message out there to more folks so that we can help more people who are going through divorce and, and help them understand that divorce doesn't have to be destructive. And so trying to make our platform bigger. And I don't know what grand ways I'm going to do that, but I've been noodling on it. Oh, I, I got to tell you, I was just telling Christina before we got on this call, I'm so impressed by your website, just the way that you approach, you know, you approach divorce. It's not just all like the different functions of alimony child support distribution you start with what is your current status like what where are you currently situated and then you start talking about the substance which is something that not many attorneys do um I, just your front page we were just talking about how we might have to friendly steal some of your ideas because it's so wonderful. Oh, okay that's great when you steal that steal the meter too you know it's kind of like the forest fire like how <laughs> There's one of those in there too. Like, might my marriage be in trouble? And it goes from green all the way to red. Oh, really? Yeah, you got to find that. Oh, okay, and by the way, I was gonna say all of you have awesome websites. When I was uh, reading some things about each one of you to prepare for today, um, all your websites are awesome. I mean, I get lost on Megan's every time. I'm like, there's more oh, resources. Megan's website. There's more resources. Oh, Megan, your more resources. Amazing. <laughs> John, do you have any answered any questions though? I'm. What are you? What are you gonna change? Like, yeah. what, what would you like to? continue as we move forward well i think working from home has really been um a wonderful thing um i've gotten so much uh so much more done at home more than i ever thought i would ever get done and most of it has to do around the non-legal parts of we've talked a lot about law but um in terms of developing our businesses and developing marketing ideas and sales strategies I realized how much more I can get done when I don't have people in the office bothering me all the time with um, legal related issues. I mean, it's lot, uh, fun to talk about cases from time to time, uh, much like Christina said earlier, and I think Allison, you touched on the fact that you run your firm. Um, I don't really handle a lot of uh, legal cases anymore. So while it's fascinating to me, I'm more concentrated on actually growing the firm and finding new ways to bring in the right kinds of clients, because I think that's one thing you know, people don't concentrate enough on is the right kinds of clients. This whole opportunity has given, given me so much more of an opportunity just to sit in front of my computer in quiet and really think about what we can do and then actually do it. And that's really, I think, the big issue most of us have is we have all these great ideas and then we don't do them. They just sit on the long list and the list gets longer and longer and longer. Yeah. 
And I, and I just, I don't know if I'd like to take this and bottle it up and continue it moving forward when the courts get back to full capacity and all of the, you know, the hustle and bustle gets back to where it was before, how to bottle up this, this peace and calm that I've been experiencing to be able to do more of these things. Like, for example, this has been an incredible um, conversation with all you guys, and this is the exact type of thing that in normal circumstances is virtually impossible to find seven people that can be on the call at the same time. But because we're in this environment right now, everyone's got much more flexibility in their schedule than we all had before. So I really hope that we can continue that moving forward. Um, and because at the end of the day, like I said several times, we're all business owners. And while we are attorneys, we all want to build our businesses, make them better so that we can serve more people and uh, be better for our employees, our families, and everything else. I just want that to continue. And uh, working from home is great. Being here is great. It really doesn't matter to me. I just want to make sure that you've got happy employees that um, do good work so that they uh, can make happy clients that want to come back for more business in the future. For a second divorce. <laughs> no, just no. kidding. <laughs> we, we've had that, haven't we? We've had the second divorce. We've had, we've had the people that have gotten married, divorced, and remarried the same person and gotten divorced yeah. again. Those are the best. Especially when you wrote the prenup before the second marriage. That's always good, too. So anyway, that's our show for today. Thank you so much for joining us. I want to thank this outstanding panel for a great roundtable. You all are awesome. If you, anyone watching wants to reach any of our guests, we're going to provide all of their contact information in the description of this program. So you should have no trouble reaching them. So again, thank you all for joining us, and we will see you next time. Mm -hmm.